When St. Ignatius arrived in Rome in 1537, he chose to place his headquarters in the middle of the city, in the very heart of the urban fabric, close to the papal court, to the city government, and the large Jewish neighborhood located between the very rich and the destitute, between princes and prostitutes. The Jesuits used this location as a center from which all their urban ministries radiated. The rooms of St. Ignatius are an important part of the Jesuit heritage. Here the Jesuit's founder dreamed his vision of service to God and to the church. Here he lived for the last 12 years of his life and here he died on July 31st, 1556. More importantly, it helps us to rediscover the man who lived here, the simplicity of his life the integrity of his service and the clarity of his vision. Father Ignatius lived in these rooms the last 12 years of his life where he had written the constitutions of the society and his massive correspondence and where he had died after long sufferings in 1556. The first room of the apartment had many functions. It was the normal entrance to the general's suit and served as a waiting room and secretarial space. Documents relate that it was often used as a small dining room when Jesuits visited St. Ignatius before leaving or upon returning from distant works. Its windows with original shutters overlooked the garden of the first house. The ceiling is almost entirely original. The bronze head of St. Ignatius is an exact cast made from the terracotta version of the original death mask in the Jesuit archives in Rome. The placement of the bronze shows St. Ignatius's height. The small desk was St. Ignatius's own in which he kept his private papers. The painting from around the 15th century is called La Madonna della Scrivania, Our Lady of the Desk, because it hung over St. Ignatius's desk. St. Ignatius wrote and revised the constitutions of the Society of Jesus in this room. This fundamental document defines the shape of Jesuit life, mission and service. It is here that more than 7,000 letters 
and countless documents that were issued already during St Ignatius's lifetime. Paved in original bricks, this room was St. Ignatius's private chapel and was also used as a conference room. Here he died at dawn on July 31st, 1556. This room was also site of the first two general congregations of the Society of Jesus. <music> 